so, so glad I am on my way to heaven And I'm glad, so glad You know the world can't do me no harm I'm on my way to heaven And I'm so, so Lord, I'm on my way to heaven And I'm so, so glad I am on my way to heaven And I'm, I'm so glad You know the world can't do me no harm King Jesus is my captain And I'm so, so glad King Jesus is my captain And I'm so, so King Jesus is my my captain and I'm so glad the world can't do me no harm I am on my way to heaven and I'm glad 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 I'm on my way oh I'm glad so glad I'm on my way I'm glad I'm glad I'm so glad You know the world can't do me no. King Jesus is my captain. Jesus is my captain, and I'm so I'm glad. I'm glad. King Jesus is my captain, and I'm so. King Jesus is my captain, and I'm glad about it. You know the world can't do me no harm. I'm on my way, I'm on my way to heaven, and I'm so, I've got joy on my way to heaven, and I'm so, so, I'm on my way, I'm on my way, I'm on my way, and I'm glad about it. You know the world can't do me no harm. I'm on my way, I'm on my way. I'm glad, 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 glad I'm on my way. Yes, and I'm glad about it. I, I, I'm on my way. I'm, I'm glad. church say amen. If you're happy to be here tonight, say amen. If it's been a good day, smile real big and say amen. If you know the Lord has been showing up good to you, say amen. Amen. I'm encouraged tonight by your presence, uh, seeing all the rain coming down, the thunder and lightning. Uh, it's enough to keep folk in the house, and yet here we are. And I'm thankful to God that you've come tonight. And that he's granted you traveling grace to be with us. This is Thursday night of the meeting. We only have one night left. Uh, but uh, I don't know about you, but I've been having a great time. A great time in the Lord. And I'm always thankful to uh, Brother Lawton and to this church for having the faith in me to come and be with you this week and share from God's unsearchable riches. And uh, I'm praying that even tonight someone will respond to the gospel We've had three new sisters added to the body. 
one last night and uh, two earlier in the week. And we're just thankful, dear God, for these additions to the kingdom. Uh, I don't know if they told Brother Turner to get me up earlier or not. So it looked like he got me up earlier so I would finish earlier. But it ain't going to work. It's not going to work, Chris. It ain't going to work. <laughs> no, I'm going to try. I'm going to try my best to be very <clears throat> expeditious with time. Uh, I don't want to be like the young man. The young man came to a church to preach. He wasn't very good. He, they were given a chance to preach. He got up and he was he started his message. And the minister was sitting around right where Brother Lawton's sitting. And, and the guy got into his message about 15 minutes. He's, he's struggling. And the preacher sitting over there said, come on, preacher, come on. And he's trying his best to, to urge him on, you know. And so he... He got a little bit better, but he got a little longer. He went about about 30 more minutes, and the preacher, the minister sitting there said, come on, preacher, come on. And so the guy tried to, you know, fire it up a little bit more, and he got to about an hour, and the minister stood up and started wiping his eyes, and he said, amen, Pharaoh. <laughs> and the guy, he, he, he thought he was trying to push him, and so he just kept preaching, kept preaching another 15 minutes, and the minister said, amen, Pharaoh. And the guy stopped his sermon. He said, sir, why do you keep saying amen, Pharaoh? He said, let my people go. <laughs> so I know where I am in Newark, New Jersey, and I, I'm, I don't want to take the chance that somebody be bold enough to say amen, Pharaoh, because uh, that will make me preach another 15 minutes if you do. But I do want to be conscious of time tonight, and I want you to be able to Get back home safely, and we appreciate you coming tonight. And we pray that you'll come uh, again tomorrow night and bring somebody with you. Uh, tomorrow night's message is entitled, You Can Recover All. And it comes from the book of 1 Samuel, and we'll close out with that tomorrow night. Now tonight, I'm going to preach a message that is another one that's special to me, and I haven't done it uh, in a long time, but... Uh, it's one that I think would be of intrinsic value to this, this August body tonight. The title of this message is Vox Populi Ace Vox Di. Lord didn't get not one amen. <laughs> In the Roman Republic of 125 BC, there was a political reformation going on. And there were two brothers who wanted to put power back in the hands of the people. And the political reformation mantra was vox populi ace vox dia, which is interpreted the voice of the people is the voice of God. And I disagree with that phrase. I disagree with that statement and so I, I developed a sermon entitled, The Voice of the People is Not the Voice of God. And I'm prayerful tonight that as you listen to my voice, you will be listening even closer for the voice of God because God speaks to us today but not in a verbal, vocal, audible voice. He speaks through this book called the Bible, the written word of God. And I think I even quoted the scripture for you earlier in the week. And I, uh, sometimes I quote them a, a, a couple of times because I can't remember. I preach every week somewhere. But uh, God said through the, the writer of Hebrews 1.1, 1, 1, the Bible says, God who at sundry times and in divers manners, Spake unto the fathers by the prophets. God who at sundry of times and in diverse manner spake unto the fathers by the prophets, but in these last days has spoken to us by his son. And I think again, I've misquoted that, so I'm going, I'm glad it's in the book and I'll read it to you. I'm, I've got a lot of scriptures running around in my head, and Brother Lawton keeps telling me I need to start taking some pills from my memory because I preach a lot from my memory, but I know that that's what that says there. God who at sundry of times and in divers manner 
spake in times past, and that's what I was missing. I was trying to get to this other good part. Spake in times past unto the fathers by the prophets, hath in these last days spoken unto us by his son, whom he the appointed heir of all things, by whom also he made the worlds. And what we need to realize, and what all humanity needs to realize, needs to realize is that when God speaks today, uh, he does not speak to us in a verbal, vocal, audible voice, but he speaks through this book called the Bible, and this is the written word of God. Everything in here from Genesis all the way to Revelation in one way or another is connected to Jesus. And Jesus is the living word of God. And John said it best in John 1.1, 1, 1, in the beginning was the word. The word was with God and the word was God and the uh, same was with God in the beginning. And I, I'm glad John included verse 14, and the word became flesh dwelt among us as the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth, and we beheld his glory. And John says we beheld his glory. And then he said in verse 17, the law was given by Moses, but grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. And so tonight as I talk to you, I, I want to talk from this subject, the voice of the people is not the voice of God. And the reason I do it is because of Amos 8 and 11. The Bible says there is a famine in the land of hearing the voice of the Lord. People are not eager to hear from God. Now we saw people looking for him and searching for him when the twin towers were struck and buildings began to collapse and dust was flying everywhere and people were dying. We saw folk looking for God then. But then they've gotten comfortable again and they've gotten complacent and lethargic and lazy and they want to listen to all the other voices that are in the world instead of the voice of God. But there is a famine in this land today of hearing the voice of the Lord. There's a famine in this day. And there's a, there's a famine of people not wanting to know or do what God requires us to do. I, I want to make sure you understand. Uh, the Bible teaches us that, that, that God speaks through this book and he does not speak by way of man anymore in this dispensation. If you're not familiar with the eras of time, we, are, we have three different eras or dispensations of time. You have what is known as the patriarchal dispensation, which is from Adam all the way down to Moses. And then you have from Moses down to the death of Christ on the cross and his resurrection, the Mosaic period. And then after that, we are now living in what is the Christian dispensation, the Christian era of time. And really, these are the last days. We're living in the last days right now, and it would behoove any man, any woman, boy or girl, who wants to make heaven their home, who wants to have a relationship with their creator, it would behoove us to listen to the voice of God. A lot of things are being said by man, but listen, listen to the voice of God. And so tonight, I'm going to take my time here at the beginning, but then I'm going to close out with some things in the New Testament that I think would be of great value to all of us in here tonight. First of all, I want to read this text, and I want you to go with me to 1 Samuel chapter 15, and meet me, if you will, at verse 1, and we'll read down to verse number 5, and then... Uh, I want to read some select verses so that you can re-familiarize yourself with this text. 1 Samuel chapter 15, verse 1. Samuel also said unto Saul, The Lord sent me to anoint thee to be king over his people, over Israel. Now therefore hearken thou unto the voice of the words of the Lord. Is that in your Bible? I said, is that in your Bible? Yeah. Thus said the Lord of hosts, I remember that which Amalek did 
to Israel, how he laid wait for him in the way when he came up from Egypt. Now go and smite Amalek and utterly destroy all that they have and spare them not, but slay both man and woman, infant and suckling, ox and sheep, camel and ass. And Saul gathered the people together and numbered them in Telium, 200,000 footmen and 10,000 men of Judah. And Saul came to a city of Amalek and laid wait in the valley. Skip now down to verse number 8 with me. And he took Agag, the king of, Amalek, of the Amalekites, alive. And utterly destroyed all the people with the edge of the sword. But Saul and the people spared Agag and the best of the sheep and of the oxen and of the fatlings and the lambs and all that was good. And would not utterly destroy them. But everything that was vile and refused that they destroyed utterly. Skip over with me to verse number 18. And the Lord sent thee on a journey and said, Go and utterly destroy the sinners of the Amalekites and fight against them until they be consumed. Wherefore then didst thou not obey the voice of the Lord, but didst fly upon the spoil and didst evil in the sight of the Lord? And Saul said unto Samuel, Yea, I have obeyed the voice of the Lord and have gone the way which the Lord sent me and have brought Agag, the king of the Amalek, Amalek and have utterly destroyed the Amalekites. Verse number 21. But the people, the people, the people took of the spoil sheep and oxen, the chief of the things which should have been utterly destroyed, to sacrifice unto the Lord thy God in Gilgal. Are you still here? Verse 22. <clears throat> and Samuel said, Hath the Lord as great delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices as in obeying the voice of the Lord? Behold, to obey is better than sacrifice and to hearken than the fat of rams. For rebellion is a, a sin of witchcraft and stubbornness is as iniquity and idolatry. Because thou hast rejected the word of the Lord, he hath also rejected thee from being king. Is that in your Bible? Verse 24, And Saul said unto Samuel, I have sinned, for I have transgressed the commandment of the Lord and thy words, because I feared the people and obeyed their voice. The voice of the people is not the voice of God. I know my voice sounds a little crazy here, but it'll be all right in a minute once I get warmed up. The voice of the people is not the voice of God. God told Samuel to tell Saul, go down to the land of the Amalekites. And I want you, I want you to utterly destroy, utterly annihilate all that is down there because of what they did to the children of Israel when they came out of Egyptian bondage. He told them, go down and I want you to kill the women and the children and I want you to even kill the king, King Agag and I want you to slay all the animals and I want you to utterly destroy everything that's down there. And you will remember that God has anointed <clears throat> and appointed Saul to be king of Israel. We talked about that on Sunday morning. He anointed him and appointed him to be king and he had found favor in the eyes of God. But now because Saul disobeyed the voice of God and obeyed the voice of the people, now he has lost favor with God. He told him, you go down there and I want you to wipe them out. 
And if Saul had been had used good sense, he would have done exactly what the Lord told him to do. Because when Samuel came down, Samuel said, uh, he, he, he saw him, and, and before Samuel could even say a word, Saul started lying, talking about, we have done what the Lord has required of us, what the Lord has commanded. And Samuel said, well, if you did what God asked you to do, why do I hear the bleeding of sheep? See, why do I hear the lowing of cattle in the distance? And Samuel knew that Saul had not obeyed the commands of God. He had not done what God required and asked him to do. And so therefore, uh, Saul starts lying about what happened. He said, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. We did what God asked us to do. And, but he had King Agag right there. He didn't kill him. And Samuel, Samuel began to ask him. He said, now, Saul, I don't understand this. You were just named king. I came down and found you. You didn't think very much of yourself, but God thought enough of you to be the first king of Israel. When I came down there, I called all of Israel together. When I came, I called out the tribe of Benjamin. When I came, I looked in the tribe of Benjamin and found your family, Matri, and I picked you out of them, even when you didn't think you were worthy. And I told you, God has laid hands on you to be king. He said, now, here you are, not just many days from there, and you have disobeyed the voice of God. And, Sam, and Saul, Saul's response to him was, well, the reason I didn't do everything God told us to do like he told us to do it is because the people, I feared the people. It was the voice of the people that made him do what he did so he says. Now the thing is here, my, my, I maintain the voice of the people is not the voice of God. It's not the voice of God. And when you listen to people above God, you're going to mess up every time. Every time you're going to mess up because God is sovereign. God is holy. God is righteous. God is good. God is perfect. Everything God does is right. You ought to obey God rather than man. Am I right about it? Now you may say you need to say amen now because in a few minutes I'm going to tell you things that God said that are contrary to what man has said and you've got to find where will you stand. Will you stand listening to the voice of God or will you stand listening to the voice of man? He said, I listen, I hearken to the voice of the people. And I wish I really had the time to deal with the context of that text. But really what I want you to see that in this dispensation, there are many voices. Many voices. And I think this would be more relevant and more significant for this August body tonight. You need to know that there are many voices, but there's only one voice you need to listen to. And I want to make sure you understand, first and foremost, before we get to these other voices, that you don't have to wait for God to speak to you verbally because he, he does not do that today. He doesn't do that today. God does not speak. And I've heard, I've heard guys on television, I've heard them on radio, I've heard them in person say, God spoke to me last night. It was late at night, it was in the middle of the night, and it's always nobody's there but them when God speaks to them. I've heard them say, I was at home, I was in the bed, and I, it was dark, and, and everything, and I heard the voice of God in the corner of my house speaking to me. No, somebody done broke into your house. Are they riding down the road and it's storming and lightning and nobody around, no cars around? And I heard a voice in the back seat of my car. I believe it was the voice of God speaking. No, oh, you about to be jacked. God does not speak today in a verbal, vocal, audible voice to any man or woman, nor has any man seen God. 
And I want to make sure you understand this tonight now. Go with me just to a few scriptures before I get into the heart of this message. I want you to run over with me to John, if you will. Uh, Chris, go over, go over to John chapter uh, 5 and hold verse number 37, and I'll be there in a minute. The rest of you, come with me to John chapter 1 and verse number 18. John chapter 1 and verse number 18. And I want you to listen to what John records here about how we communicate or how God communicates with us. Listen, and, and, and I, know, I know this is going to be contrary to what some folk believe or preach or teach, but John recorded in John 1.18, he says, No man has seen God at any time. Yes, sir. Do you hear me? No man has seen God at any time. The only begotten Son, which is in the bosom of the Father, he hath declared him. So no man has seen God at any time. Now, I want you to run over to John chapter 5 and verse number 37. John 5 and verse number 37. And if you have it, Chris, read that for me. And the Father himself. The Father himself. Come which on. Which hath sent me. Which hath sent me. Hath borne witness of me. Hold it right now. This is Jesus talking. He's bearing witness here, and he says, Now the Father hath sent me. Read. Hath borne witness of me. And borne witness of me. Ye have neither heard you, his voice. You have neither heard his voice. At any time. At any time. Nor seen his nor shape. Nor seen his shape. Yes. No man, no woman, no boy or girl has laid eyes on God and has heard from the voice of God, especially in this dispensation. Yes. Now, back in, 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 I think it was in uh, Exodus 32, when Moses was getting the law up on the mountain, the people were down at the base of the mountain and they had, had corrupted themselves, but God was giving the law up on the mountain and, and God sent Moses back down. Now, Moses wanted to see God's glory. He wanted yes. to see his face. And God said, no, you can't see my face. Am I right about it? He That's saw right. the backside of God and even so much so that when he came down the mountain, he had his face veiled and he was beaming because he'd been in the presence of God. Yes, but sir. no man no woman, no boy or girl can claim they have seen God or heard from him verbally or vocally. The only way you can hear his voice is right here in this book called the Bible. Yes, sir. Y'all got time for this tonight? Yeah. And there are many voices, many voices. And I, I brought this little letter I promised y'all about earlier, and I may get to it before I close. This was just from a, a church, uh, some crazy thing, uh, a crazy voice that I wanted you to hear where they're right. asking you to send them some money, and they're going to send you a blessing, and they're going to make sure your salvation is intact. That's the kind of voices that are in the world today. Uh -huh. Now, the voice of the people will tell you that any church will do. I grew up hearing that. I grew up hearing uh, on the radio that you can go to the church of your choice. But when it comes to salvation, you, I don't have a choice. Yes, that's right. what I've been trying to assure you of each night with this book called the Bible, that the Lord has but one house, one church, one body, one bride, his kingdom, and this church didn't just start in Acts chapter 2. We saw it. We were able to end in Acts chapter 2. It was prophesied in the Old Testament. The Old yeah. Testament is full of messianic prophecy that talks about the coming of Jesus and the establishment of his house on the earth which was already established in heaven. Am I right about it? Yes, sir. Colossians 1.18, he said over there, well, let me, let me get to this right quick. The church started, as I said last night, in Acts chapter 2. We saw the beginning of the church the Holy Spirit comes down. The apostles preach in every man's language. They obey the preaching of the apostles. And they are baptized in water. Those that are baptized are added to the 12. And now the church has begun. And Luke says in verse 47, the Lord added to the church yes, daily such as should be saved. Uh -huh. 
So that lets me know, that lets me know that this church that started in Acts chapter 2 finally came to fruition, but it was prophesied. I quoted for you last night, I believe it was last night, Acts 2.44, where, where Daniel, I mean not Acts 2.44, Daniel 2.44, where Daniel said, and in the days of these kings shall the God of heaven set up a kingdom uh -huh. which shall not be destroyed and it shall not be left to other people, but uh -huh. it shall break into pieces and consume all nations and it shall stand forever. Now, you may not be familiar with the verse, so let me give you the background to what he's talking about in verse 44. Nebuchadnezzar has a dream that utterly disturbs him. He sees the, the image of a man. Daniel 2, read it at your leisure. He sees the image of a man. He has a head of gold, breast and arms of silver, uh -huh. belly and thighs of brass, legs of iron, and feet and toes of clay and iron. Yes, sir. And I'm going to show you the church in prophecy out of this dream Nebuchadnezzar has. Daniel call, I mean Nebuchadnezzar calls his soothsayers, his astrologers, and he says, fellas, listen, I dreamed something last night. I can't remember what it was. I don't know what it means. That's why I got y'all on the payroll. I want y'all to come tell me. What did I dream? Interpret that dream for me. They begin speaking in Syriac and they begin to kind of butter the king up and down. And he said, I ain't asked you all that. I said, what did I dream? And they said, well, if you just tell us the dream, we'll interpret it for you. He said, I told you I can't remember the dream. They said, well, king, we can't help you. We can't tell you. He said, I'm going to kill you. I'm going to kill your wives and your children. Isn't that right? Daniel chapter 2, he said, I'm going to kill all of y'all, but you, you're no good to me. You can't interpret this dream. It's upset me. It's disturbed me. And so Belteshazzar heard about it. You know who Belteshazzar is? That's Daniel, that great state, statesman of Israel. He heard about it. He spoke that night with three boys, Mishael, Hananiah, and Azariah. Y'all know who I'm talking about? Shadrach, Meshach, not a bad Negro now, a bad Negro. <laughs> Abednego, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And so during the night, God, get this now, God gave the interpretation and the dream, the dream and the interpretation to Daniel. Daniel went back to Nebuchadnezzar. He said, this is what you dreamed last night. You saw the terrible image of a man and had a head of gold, breast and arms of silver, belly and thighs of brass, legs of iron, feet and toes of clay and iron. He began to break that thing down. He said, now Nebuchadnezzar, you and Babylon, you are the head of gold, but you're not going to last forever. Breast and arms of silver represented the Medo-Persians. They would rise, but they'd also fall. Belly and thighs of brass represented the Macedonians, the Grecians. They would rise, but they'd also fall. The legs of iron represented the Roman Empire. They would rise, but they'd also fall. Daniel said, you saw this terrible image of a man. You saw a stone cut out of the mountain without hand. That means by the hand of God. Are y'all with me tonight? That's the same stone I quoted in Isaiah 28, verse 16, where he said, Therefore, thus said the Lord God, Behold, I lay in Zion for a foundation, a stone, a tried stone, a precious cornerstone, a sure foundation. That's the stone that came out the mountain, came down the mountain, utterly destroyed the terrible image. The Babylonians destroyed, Medes and Persians destroyed, Macedonians destroyed, Romans destroyed. Everything was destroyed. And if you keep reading, out of all that destruction came up another mountain and it filled all the earth. And I'm telling you, this was the church in prophecy. With Jesus, the Son of God, coming from glory. And he's establishing it on the earth so you and I can get in the church. Get in the kingdom. Get in the house. Are y'all still here? So when you say, 
when you say to me, well, uh, they tell me I can go to the church of my choice. When, when it comes to salvation, you don't have a choice because there was only one that started right here in Acts chapter 2. And this is the house that Jesus built, bought, and purchased with his own blood. Am I right about him? It's rock bottom, hell proof, Holy Spirit filled and bound for the promised land. And whether you in it or not, it's going back to glory according to what in the book and I want to prove tonight that the apostles were consistent in this one voice church they spoke with one voice they were unified because they knew that when Jesus died he died to establish the kingdom the house the church and he even told him in Matthew 16 upon this rock I will build my church Get from me, uh, Ephesians chapter 1. Let's just run through Ephesians. We'll look at the, the oneness of the church because there are many voices that tell you you can go to the church of your choice. But when it comes to salvation, there is but one choice. And that one choice is the house that Jesus built, bought, and purchased with his own blood. Listen to what Paul says in Ephesians chapter 1. Start at verse number 19, brother Chris. Ephesians 1, 19. Come on. See, see, you need to bring your Bible. You need to bring your Bible. Yeah. Yeah, come on. What is the exceeding greatness of his power to us, word, uh -huh. who believe Read. according to the working of his mighty power, Read. which he wrought in Christ Read. when he raised him from the dead yeah. and set him at his own right hand come on. in the heavenly places. Come on. Far above all principality and power uh -huh. and might Read. and dominion uh -huh. and every name come on. that is named Read. Not only in this world, Come on. but also in that which is to come. Read. And hath put all things listen, under his listen, feet. Listen, listen, Paul says, God hath put all things under the feet of Jesus. That's yes, who he's sir. talking about right yes, here. Sir. That's who he's talking about. He's talking about Jesus. Keep reading. And gave him. Gave him. To what? To be the head. To be the head. Over all things. Over all things. To the church. To what? The church. To what? The church. To the yes, church. Sir. Well, if you say the church, that means there's only one there. Yes, sir. Am I right about it? And so if there's only one, how can you listen to a voice that goes to the church of your child? Lord, Since I've been out here in uh, in uh, uh, Do it. New, New Jersey, yeah. In New Jersey, since I've been in New Jersey, looks just like Los Angeles. There's a church on every corner. Have mercy. Two or three on every corner. But which one belongs to the Lord? And I maintain, I preach the church that he built, bought, and purchased with his own blood that's under his authority, that worships according to his commandments. That's the church that belongs to him, and that's the church you can be saved in. Brother Chris, go over to Ephesians chapter 3 and verse number 21. Ephesians 3 and verse number 21. The Bible says what? Come on, unto him. Unto him. Come on, read. Be glory. Be glory. In the church. Hold it now. Paul said, unto him be glory in, in the church. church. Come on. By Christ By Jesus. By Christ Jesus. Throughout all ages. Throughout all ages. World, world without, end. without end. Amen. Amen. Again, Paul is consistent with the Matthew 16 thing. I will build my church. He knows because there is only one. Go over, Brother Chris, if you real quickly. Ephesians chapter 4. Start with verse number 1. Start with verse number 1. Read. I therefore, I therefore, the prisoner of the Lord, prisoner of the Lord, beseech you, beseech you, that you walk worthy, that you walk worthy, of the vocation wherewith ye are called, of the vocation of which you are called. Read with all lowliness, with all lowliness and meekness, with long suffering, with long suffering, one another, for bearing one another in love, in love in endeavoring to keep watch the this unity church. of hold, the spirit. Hold it right there, brother Chris. The reason you only have one choice hmm. is so that there will be unity. Among the believers. And yes, see, that's, it's the same thing. It's the same thing when we start talking about worship. 
and we say there's no, no authorization for mechanical instruments of music. God wants a cappella singing because when we come to worship, five things that God wants from us, he wants us to sing, he wants us to pray, he wants us to study, he wants us to commune, he wants us to give. All of these are by apostolic authority and they're all things everybody in here can do and that would yes, make sir. us unified. And so when we get to Ephesians 4, you see a lot of ones here because God means for unity yes, to sir. abound among the believers. Yes, sir. He said, endeavoring to keep the unity of the spirit yes, in the sir. bond of peace. Read. There is one body. There is one body. And Hold it now. Just one. Yes, sir. Just one. I'm not big enough, smart enough to add to God's word. I'm going to stay with what's in the books. Yes, sir. Paul says there is one body. body. And he doesn't stop there. Read. And one spirit. One spirit. Come on. Even as you are Even called. Even as you are calling. And one, one hope, hope of, your of your calling. Come on, read. One Lord. One Lord. Come on. One faith. One faith. And one baptism. One baptism. Holy right there. Now, if you can handle one law. Yes, sir. And one faith and one baptism. How in the world do you miss the one body? <laughs> Lord Jesus. Come on now. Lord, and I'm not just talking to this August body. I'm talking to somebody that's watching us on Facebook Live or watching us on some social media outlet. I want you to understand that the Bible has instructions for us. We must follow those instructions and we'll find everything we need in there and that's the only voice we are to listen to mm -hmm. one Lord, one faith one baptism see there are many voices many voices will tell you they'll tell you well you can go to the church of your choice but when it comes to Jesus and salvation you don't have a choice Go over to Ephesians chapter 5 and verse 23. And I know these people in here already know these scriptures. But there are people who are watching us, who are listening uh, from, from afar. You may have never heard these scriptures before, but write them down and check them out. What does Paul say in Ephesians 5, 23? Come on. For the husband is the head of the husband wife. Husband is the head of the wife. Even as Christ. Even as Christ. Is the head of the Head thee. of the church. church. Come on. And he's the savior of the And he is the savior of the body. He's the head. There's one body. Everything is under his authority. Are you following me? Now, if you want to be in that one church, uh -huh. in the one body, you have to listen to the voice of God, which, which I've been telling you for the last three, four nights. You must be baptized in water. But the voice of the people will tell you you don't have to be baptized. I've heard that before. I've watched some of these shows and they've told them to just come down to the altar. Well, Come down and tarry. That's nowhere in the Bible. Come down and say the sinner's prayer. That's nowhere in the Bible. We're talking about biblical things now because we're trying to get to glory. Am I right about it? Yes, and there are even yes. those who'll tell you you need to wait to be baptized in the Holy Spirit. That's not correct either. All right, sir. Water baptism is the only thing that is commanded today if you want to be saved. Now, Holy Spirit baptism took place, but it was only for two groups of people. The Jews got it in Acts chapter 2 when the Holy Spirit came down on the apostles, and then the Gentiles got it in Acts chapter 10 when it came down on the household of Cornelius, and not only that, once they were baptized in the Holy Spirit in Acts chapter 10, then they were baptized in water because Paul and the Jews saw that the Gentiles were going to be fellow heirs with them at the table of brotherhood, and he said, who can forbid water? So they baptized Cornelius and his household. Yes, sir. That's right. Somebody well, why they wait so late? Well, if you go back to the Old Testament, Isaiah chapter 62, God said, I'm going to give my people a new name. But they're not going to get the new name till the Gentiles see the righteousness of God. Gentiles didn't see it in Acts chapter 2. They didn't see it until Acts chapter 10. Yeah. Then after they saw it in Acts 10, you find in Acts chapter 11 verse 26, they were called Christians first. And Antioch. And Antioch. Yes, sir. Am I right about it? 
And for those who've been in the church a long time, I mean, this is, this is old school for us, but there's somebody who's never heard this before. The voice of the people tell you you can go to any church. Voice of the people will tell you you can get in any kind of way. And I've been trying to tell you the form, the plan each night. The voice of the people will tell you that there is nothing in a name. Well, well. Hello. Nothing in a name. And I beg to differ. I beg to differ. This is my wife. Her first name is Vicky. Her last name now is Evans. And so she is my wife because she wears my name. All right. Are you following me? And so when I get up and say, wife, let's go, the one that wears my name will follow me out. That doesn't mean all wives get up and follow me. We're going to have a problem, not just with me, with her. But the one that wears my name it's following me. There's something in the name. Yes, sir. Am I right about it? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yes, sir. But there are people that will tell you, no, there's nothing in the name. And I'm here to tell you, we who are baptized, we wear the name Christian. Yes, sir. Because we are in the image of Jesus. Somebody say, if you take that I-A-N off Christian, it means I ain't nothing. Yes, sir. And that's true. It's true. Because when you come into relationship with the Lord, when you've accepted him, you've, you've followed the plan, you've come up out of the watery grave of baptism, and you, you've taken on uh, his nature, you, you begin to walk like him and talk like him, you change your mind, you're in a process of transformation. You leave here wearing his name. Amen. We're Christians. The voice of the people. The voice of the people will tell you, well, it doesn't really matter if you go to church or not. Well, that's not what the book says. The apostles assembled on the first day of the week. Gave us our apostolic authority, gave us uh, what we are to do that's acceptable in the eyes of God. We commune every first Sunday. 1 Corinthians 11 verse 23, am I right? We give as we've been prospered, 1 Corinthians 16, 1 and 2. We sing and we pray, 1 Corinthians chapter 15. We, we study God's word, 2 10. See, we do these things by scripture and by command and we do it because we're unified are y'all following me the voice of the people is not the voice of God and that's why it is so very important that those of us that preach must keep on preaching what's in the book regardless to whether it's popular convenient uh-huh. And, I, and a lot of my brethren are going a different path now. They don't want to hurt people's feelings. They want to say those easy things, those things that tickle their ears. They want to say things that make them comfortable and happy. And I'm here to tell you, those of us who believe and are convicted will continue to stand firmly on the word of God and preach what we find in the book and give people the opportunity to accept or reject it. And I'm not, I'm not, I don't care if I'm not in the club because I never wanted to be in anybody's club anyway. My daddy did that. He walked by himself. He's in everybody's club, everybody's clique. He just meandered from one to the other and tried to help whoever he could help. And I took on the same nature. And so I'm not in anybody's camp. I'm in Jesus' camp. And the Lord has blessed me to stand boldly for all this time without incident so far uh, to preach this gospel. And I know why he keeps blessing me because he wants me to share the gospel in its simplicity, in its purity, and do it with power. And I don't know how you feel about it. And I'm almost closing. I said I was going to quit a little early tonight so y'all can get on home. But I want you to understand, I am obligated 
And it's not a bad obligation. But I'm obligated because I am blessed. The Lord has been with me and walked with me and I've walked with him and I know him and I know he knows me. At nine years old, my father baptized me in a pool. 19, uh, 1969, December, West End Church of Christ. My earthly father took me down in the watery grave of baptism. He held me down, brother Lord, and I don't know why he kept holding me down so long. But he, I guess he made sure it took, but he held me down, and then he finally led me back up. And I have been with God ever since 1969. I tell folk I'm full of the Holy Ghost because the Spirit took up residence in me. And I've been blessed to go all over this country in, in different countries around the world without incident. Flying over the water 15 hours in the darkness to get to South Africa, to get to Israel, to get to Italy. God has used me and blessed me. And I'm obligated to tell somebody about Jesus. I'm obligated to talk about the voice of God as opposed to the voice of man. And I pray for, I'm prayerful that much good is coming from the preaching. I have some young men right now in Africa that I, I text back and forth and I'm trying to mentor, to mentor them and encourage them and I'm trying to do to them what others have done to me. Just pour myself into them and encourage them and, and, and help them to keep on keeping on and stay with the gospel. Some people say, oh, that stuff y'all preach now, that's old fogey, that's antiquated, that's outdated. I beg to differ. I beg to differ. This is what the apostles preach. How are you going to come up with something different than what the apostles preach? I ain't mad at nobody. I just I get upset because a lot of times people listen to voices all around them instead of listening to the voice of God. And when you listen to God, he will keep you. He'll bless you. He'll walk with you. He'll, he'll walk before you. I'm, I'm a living witness of it. He can go before you. Be preparing the way so that when you walk in by faith, just following his path, when you get to that bad thing, he's there working that thing out and it's not as bad as you thought it was going to be. The voice of the people is not the voice of God. You hear them say, go to the church of your choice. You hear them say you can come any way, but you can't. You hear them say there's nothing in the name. You hear them even say that it's okay for women to preach from the pulpit. I didn't get on that tonight. But God never authorized women to preach from the pulpit. In the church, in the worship assembly, God has given different roles. And he gave the man the role of leading in worship. You don't find women leading in worship. Not, it's not because they're not equal or they don't have, they, they're not, you know, they don't have the ability, but God gave man the role. We all have different roles. When it comes to procreation, I guarantee you there's not a man that can give birth to a baby. God didn't give him that role. He gave the role to the woman. Am I right about it? And so you need to accept your role in the church. And so he gave men the role of leading in the worship service. And we're getting away from it. Even on this coast, this east coast, there was an egalitarian movement that started on this coast where they, they felt like it was all right for women to do everything in worship, preach, sing, uh, you know, read scripture, pray, all of that, which is not authorized by God. Amen. But that's the movement that's going through and is sweeping across the country. See, we down in Texas, we usually get things last, but it gets there. <laughs> but it'll sweep all the way across. And that's why it's important that we obey the voice of God. Is that all right? Yeah. It's five and nine. I'm going to quit right here. 
but I'm going to add it on to tomorrow night, okay? Because tomorrow night I want to finish strong here and I want you to take this message tomorrow night home with you. I don't have any problem with this crowd believing in the voice of God. I know you folk would believe in the voice of God. I want somebody who's listening to know you ought to listen to God rather than man. Do like God said. If you look back in that text, there's so much good preaching in that text. Because uh, Samuel even asked Saul, he said, you think it's important to God of sacrifices as opposed to you obeying his voice? And see, I could camp out there a while because we're, we're starting to do things in worship that we think God might like. We, we, we think this will make God happy. You don't think God knows what he wants? You don't think that his voice has not already spoken what is acceptable to him? I just want to drop that because I know there are those who disagree. Y'all know where I am. You know where I am, and I, I stand convicted. I really, I stand convicted, and I don't preach anything I can't defend. And I'm not trying to start no trouble, but I, you know, like John Lewis said, I like good trouble. Good trouble. Yeah, man, good trouble. God bless you. Stand on your feet tonight. Stand on your feet. Stand on your feet. I'm going to quit right here, but I'll be back tomorrow night. Lord, say the same. There may be somebody here right now who is not a member of the body. I don't know everybody in this room, but there may be somebody here, not a member, and we want to extend to you the invitation right now. We want you to come forward. We want you to say, I believe Jesus is the Son of God. You've got to be convicted by that now. You've got to make that statement and live by it. I believe he's Son of God. Repent of your sins. Confess his name and be baptized in water and added to the one body, the one house, the one church, the one bride, the one kingdom. Huh? If you want to be saved, you have to be in the Lord's house. Yes, Connected to him. Let me drop this before I let you go, and I hate to leave things untied. The kingdom was already in existence in heaven. Okay? We could not get into the kingdom until God sent his son to die, be buried, resurrected, ascend back to glory, sit on his right hand. Yes. Commissioned the apostles. They preached the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. The church started in Acts chapter 2, which is an extension of the kingdom. You say, well, preacher, you got scripture for that? I sure do. I shall do, Colossians 1 13, who hath delivered us mm -hmm. from the power of darkness mm -hmm. and translated us into the kingdom of God's dear Son. That's Paul talking to the church at Colossae. And I'm proud for this, this evening that there's somebody here who wants to be in the kingdom in the house, in the church, in the body, in the bride that I told you last night he's coming back for. Yes, sir. Yeah, man, he's coming back for it. He's coming back for it. So I pray, I pray tonight that if you're here and you're not a member, you'll come down the house like these other women have done this week uh, and put the Lord on in baptism. If you're here in a guilty distance from God, you need the prayers of the righteous, you need forgiveness from God, now is the best time, the acceptable time. Come to us right now. If you just need prayer for your job, your health, whatever it is, we'll pray with you and pray for you. That's what this meeting is about, is strengthening those who are listening to the voice of God. What you got this evening? He's sweet, I know. He's sweet, I know. All right. Come on, come on.